നമസ്കാരം നമ്മൾ കഴിഞ്ഞ വീഡിയോയിൽ വൈറ്റോക്ക് അസറ്റ് മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് കമ്പനിയുടെ സി ഇ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആശിഷ് സോമയ്യ അദ്ദേഹത്തിനായിട്ടുള്ള ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ ആയിരുന്നു അതിൽ അദ്ദേഹം ഒത്തിരി കാര്യങ്ങൾ നമുക്ക് പഠിപ്പിച്ച് തരേണ്ടത് ഇന്ത്യയിൽ നമ്മൾ എന്തിന് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യണം ഇന്ത്യയിൽ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നമുക്കുള്ള ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി എന്താണ് ഇതിനെക്കുറിച്ചാണ് നമ്മൾ കഴിഞ്ഞ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ സീരീസിൽ പറഞ്ഞത് ഇന്ന് സംസാരിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് ആ കഴിഞ്ഞ ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂവിൻ്റെ തന്നെ സി കണ്ടിന്യൂവേഷൻ ആയിട്ടാണ് നമ്മളിന്ന് സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് ഇതിൽ നമുക്ക് ഒത്തിരി കാര്യങ്ങൾ നമുക്ക് അദ്ദേഹത്തെ ഇത് മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ പറ്റും ഇതിൽ സംസാരിക്കുന്നത് മ്യൂച്വൽ ഫണ്ടിൽ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യണോ അതോ പി എം എസിൽ പോർട്ട്ഫോളിയോ മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് സർവീസിൽ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യണോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇതിലൊക്കെ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ടൈമിൽ നമ്മൾ ഓരോ ക്ലയൻസിൻ്റെയും എന്ത് ലെവൽ ഓഫ് ആളുകൾക്കാണ് ഇത്തരം ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ ആവശ്യം ഇത്തരം കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് നമ്മളിതിൽ സംസാരിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് അപ്പോൾ നമുക്കെല്ലാവർക്കും ആ വീഡിയോ സീരീസിലേക്ക് ഇൻ്റർവ്യൂ സീരീസിലേക്ക് പോകാം താങ്ക് യു ദിസ് ഇസ് അഗെയിൻ നൗ വി ഹാവ് എ ലോഡ് ഓഫ് തിങ്സ് അബൌട്ട് ഡയറക്റ്റ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിംഗ് റെഗുലർ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ബിക്കോസ് പീപ്പിൾ ലൈക്ക് ഡിസ്ട്രിബ്യൂട്ടേഴ്സ് Uh, so what is the importance of having a advisor or a distributor because uh, you, you you yeah. have the situation because you you work with both the type of people of course <laughs> so who need a distributor who don't need advisor no see i personal in my in my personal opinion you know uh, honestly speaking like i am equidistant i meet lot of investors who invest on their own and of course i meet advisors distributors in my personal opinion i think everybody needs a hand holding and everybody needs a distributor or a advisor i'll tell you the reason why there are two or three reasons for this one is that uh, you know ultimately you need hand holding or you need a shoulder uh, or you need a or not a shoulder but you need sounding board correct so because today for example uh, however experienced i may be there are two elements there is knowledge and there is behavior mm. correct uh, in march 2020 kind of scenario when covid kind of panic comes or say on 4th june this year briefly you know supposedly government change right minor change <laughs> so what happens is that when there is a challenge it's the gut which matters not the brain uh, right uh, when there is a challenge it's the emotion like if march 2020 kind of scenario comes where one month market falls 40% correct then that is the time when you need a sounding board and that is where your knowledge and rational logic all those things just fails and emotion and behavior kind of Uh, takes over so that is the time when you want somebody to keep you in the guide rails or in the guard rails right that is one second thing is that so this is what i'm saying is that even the most knowledgeable people mm-hmm. will still need a uh, yeah, uh, sounding board should, or yeah. some kind of uh, you know yeah, person some support speak, yeah. some support or some mm-hmm. engagement now let us say you, then you come to people who are not that knowledgeable mm-hmm. so then of course they will need support because otherwise they are prone to buying something you know which is being marketed by some influencer being marketed you know just because it is tom tomed in social media or you know because the newspaper has published best performer of last one year last three year or you watch something on tv and you get impressed right so there also like whatever we are discussing we are discussing in a chat but it's not that easy to be you know like i said that you know you must make use of one year and three year data not for buying to ensure not to right, buy not to buy. correct now all those things is not easy to do i can say with my experience but people won't find yeah, it easy yeah. to no. yeah uh, everyone is coming from different uh, background yeah. for, for example a doctor it guy yeah and yeah, uh, yeah i and third is that you know the basic stuff like you know even even if you are investing what are you investing for mm-hmm. how long mm-hmm. what are your goals how much risk can you take like you know fleshing out somebody's risk profile i mean if you want to understand my risk profile you have to sit and ask me questions for the next 15 minutes correct right and what is my risk profile when in nifty is 24000 is very different from my risk profile when nifty is 14000 correct so i think that it's not that simple as is made out to be yeah, yeah. Uh, and when stock markets are booming nobody needs advice <laughs> uh, nobody needs the sounding yeah there is a there is a situation also everyone become advisors also that time yeah and but once in 5 years is yeah. once in 5 years you will get a phase when you really will need a advisor no only that time you need and the same exactly. time some situation happens in their life yeah uh, it could be uh, raise in the salary or it could be yeah. additional member in the family absolutely uh, or, or or it could be uh, taking a decision should i buy a house in kochi now when i am staying yeah. in the gulf no i can tell you simple things you know there is so much nobel prize in economics is given to study human behavior right so there are so many things i mean simple like you rightly said that there will be some life stage you know there are two funds you have invested in which fund to withdraw mm. 
Most people will withdraw the fund which has given them huge gains. Mm. They'll never withdraw the fund which has underperformed. Whereas actually it has nothing to do with either of them. Uh, on the day you want to withdraw, you have to see from here what is the prospect for each of the funds and see which one has better prospect you will keep, which one has lesser prospect you will remove. Yeah. But most people will not do this. What they will do is they will remove the fund which has given them a good profit because they will never remove the one which has given them a underperformance or a loss. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, yeah. So there are many behavioral biases also for which you need a sounding board or an advisor or somebody to engage with. Okay. Even, you know, when we get into uh, this uh, advice and everything is correct, but again there is a confusion. The mutual fund is it alone is enough. And we have a, a PMS that comes into portfolio yeah. uh, management services and uh, you are in a position where you are doing everything. Yeah. Uh, you, you are into PMS and entire, career. A, a, yeah. and, <laughs> entire asset management style uh, you are doing. Yeah. So the, the point is that, can you just define uh, what is uh, PMS and uh, AF mm. for the sake of everyone? And uh, another thing is that, uh, who is the real people who really need that kind of a product other than See, MF? two, three differences are there. I think, you know, one is like this, that if you see in India, the reality is that even today, people who are directly investing in the stock market, who have their DMAT account and broking account, that segment or those assets are bigger than the people who are owning some mutual fund or AIF or anything like that, right? Because if you take our entire market, you know, say market is about, uh, say 100 rupees is the size of the market. I think about 52 or 53 rupees of our market is owned by owners of companies and the government and, mm -hmm. you know, government is also, mm -hmm. of course, owner. 53, then say 17, 18% is owned by foreign institutions. Uh, then say approximately you can say 10% is owned by mutual funds, another 7-8% owned by insurance companies. Net net what you will realize is that some 80-85% of the market is owned by promoters and institutions. But individuals owning shares in their DMAT account is still above 15% or so. And that is not a small number. That is like a huge number running into, my sense, you know, would be about 50 lakh crore 50, or some such. Into, uh, yeah. uh, 50 lakh crore or some mm -hmm. such number. Correct. So mutual funds have reached 30 lakh crore in equity. Mm -hmm. And total mutual fund is 52 lakh crore. But direct equity in people's demat account itself, I think, is around 50 lakh crore or higher than that. Correct. So what happens is that all these people are not going to sell all their stock and jump into a mutual fund. In a PMS, what happens is that you have a DMAT account, broking account, etc. But you're just appointing somebody else to manage it rather than you managing it yourself. So the point is that direct equity is a bigger asset class than just mutual funds. And there are many people who are used to managing their money that way. So that is one segment of people who would prefer PMS. Second is that if you see mutual funds are a mass standard retail vehicle where the regulator prescribes what is large cap, what is mid cap, what is small cap, whether you know which fund can hold how much cash and whether it can hold bond or not and right, many many guardrails are defined so that a mutual fund can become a standard retail product. But if you see in a PMS, one is the operational difference I told you that it's your DMAT account, you are owning it. You, it's the shares in, in your DMAT account and somebody is managing for you. Whereas a mutual fund is a pool. You lose your identity, you lose your money. It becomes part of the move. I mean, it's not identifiable. Your money is also part of the pool. It's only identified by the units and the NAV you get, right? Whereas in a PMS, your account is in your name, shares are in your name, somebody is just managing it. And like I was telling you about standardization, in a PMS, there is no prescription given by the regulator. A PMS manager can decide to have everything in small cap and suddenly decide to move everything to large cap and can decide to sit on cash, mm -hmm. right? Um, can do anything, correct? So the latitude given to a portfolio manager of a PMS versus the latitude given to a mutual fund manager, there is a world of difference, correct? The third difference is that a mutual fund is managed as a pool, which means that it is the sum total behavior of the millions of people who are members of that, unit holders of that mutual fund. In a PMS, your account is different from my account. On 23rd March 2020, if you decide to panic and sell, the PMS manager is going to sell your DMAT balance and pay you. Mm -hmm. The day you sold, if I was buying, right, okay. those shares are going to be bought at those prices and credited to my DMAT account. That's how a PMS works. In a mutual fund, on 23rd March 2020, bottom of the market, if a mutual fund gets huge redemptions, the fund manager will decide what to sell mm -hmm. and pay the people who have redeemed. 
correct he doesn't sell the whole basket for the people who went out mm -hmm. and he doesn't buy the whole basket for the people who came in mm -hmm. so in a mutual fund what happens is that every day when money comes in and money goes out on the margin decisions are made and on the margin every day the portfolio changes and managing cash flows and managing the fund fund management is a big activity in a mutual fund in a pms fund management is not an activity only the stock picking and the portfolio is the activity mm -hmm. pmss don't keep buying and selling because some guy gave money another guy withdrew money no if you give money it is bought for you if i remove money it is sold for me okay. Okay. and the sum total behavior of hundreds of pms customers has no impact on the outcome for each other okay more independent and my, it's more my, my, independent yeah see you, uh, you know uh, for those of the people who follow behavioral finance they know very well mm -hmm. that the return that the investment fetches mm -hmm. is not the return that the investor gets right because a lot of it is when you enter when you exit the investment on its own the fund on its own may have done very well but depends when you enter when you exit mm -hmm. so the behavior of the investor impacts the outcome for that investor in a pms the behavior of individual investors is isolated completely mm -hmm. your return depends on your account my return depends on my account when i came in when i exit that is what it will fetch me okay so when when we talk about uh, uh, the investors or a client of a pms uh, what should be the ideal profile uh, or what should be the kind of a net worth they should have <laughs> i know it's, it's a, not about uh, net worth uh, but i'll tell you another thing oh. because i told you that a mutual fund is managed as a pool uh -huh. and you know it's uh, in a pms like i said your manage your money uh, manage account is managed separately mine is managed separately mm. and you know what did what is bought what is sold mm. at what price mm. right everything is transparent in a pms you can see every action of the uh -huh. uh, yeah. fund oh, manager oh, in a mutual fund you will just see the nav nav yeah. yeah whatever a pms does a mutual fund does but a mutual fund is not as transparent as a pms mm -hmm. so sometimes handling transparency also needs maturity mm -hmm. so i always tell people on a lighter note that you know if you are in a mutual fund it's like getting operated with anesthesia you cannot see what yeah. the doctor is doing okay. if it's a pms it's say you are getting operated without anesthesia you know you can see everything okay right if that guy say oops that cut went wrong you <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you, you really need to have that maturity to see that of course of course yeah <laughs> in, uh, in fact i genuinely believe that transparency needs lot of maturity to handle yeah. correct uh, but at the same time uh, if you are invested in a pms it will educate you a lot faster okay because you know you will be able to see every action evaluate every action and you will get a much better understanding mm -hmm. your understanding as an investor see the return may vary depending on the stocks which are picked and the competence or caliber of the portfolio manager i never say that pms will do better than mutual fund or vice versa that's not the point of okay. course pmss have more latitude they can be very aggressive you can have theoretically a pms of 10 mid cap stocks mm -hmm. in a mutual fund it's not possible in a pms you can have profit sharing arrangement i say that, okay zero fees mm -hmm. and 20% of whatever i beat the index mm -hmm. right so only 20% of alpha all of these things are not possible in a mutual fund in a mutual fund there is a standard fee so there are many latitude in a pms commercial flexibility investment flexibility many many benefits are there many differences are there but i would never proclaim that a pms will do better than a mutual fund or vice versa because the return depends on what stock picking is done and what is the caliber of the guy uh, managing it but at the end of the day i can tell you that because of the transparency and because of the operating differences Uh, if you are invested in a PMS, you get a better feel of what is happening, and you yourself tend to evolve okay. as an investor. I think this is very well put it. Okay, because uh, here uh, we have a tendency of uh, thinking that uh, uh, PMS is going to do well than uh, uh, mutual fund. No, if you take a last, I'll, I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, let's say we manage a PMS. Our PMS is not contra cyclical value. or a small cap or loaded with ps you know we run a broad based portfolio we run a portfolio for good governance free cash flow high return on invested capital you know today everything is flying on order books mm -hmm. whereas we are the guys who are hard nosed who will look at free cash flows correct so despite running a pms for example labeled as a pms we would be underperforming anybody who is running a contra cyclical maybe mm -hmm. a mutual fund how does it matter mm -hmm. so the return depends on where you are investing Okay. right in the long run we may outperform but currently we are maybe underperforming many mutual funds also how okay. does it matter okay. so the return depends like i said return depends on where you are invested and what's the caliber of the guy and what is the strategy he is following okay. 
uh, but the operating differences uh, are quite large okay i think uh, educated investor should come to pms then um, you know educated or one who is willing to get educated <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think yeah very very nicely put it and you know as a as a discipline for an investor uh, what should be your advice to people uh, before investing and because it's a very uh, you know everyone can come and invest now because opening a dmat account and uh, um, mm. mutual fund account is a very simple now uh, so everyone is uh, pe- people tell me that uh, i have dmat account but uh, then i asked them that how much money you put in i haven't put any money last 3 years they are sitting in dmat account but they haven't done anything mm. and they have mutual fund but uh, a person who has a capability to invest a crore mm. invest in 10000 sip mm. so that is a situation and yeah. so what is your uh, take uh, in terms of uh, uh, importance of investing in a person's life and at the same time what should be a discipline they should follow uh, while investing See, I'll tell you something, Nikhil. In last, say, 1991-92 financial year, when India got liberalized, that's when all the sectors in the stock market opened up. That's when FIS came in, and after that, SEBI happened, and DMAT and electronic trading, right? So, say, 30 years roughly is our history. People talk 1979 mm-hmm. and all, but the market was different. In 30 years, the sense, the nominal GDP has compounded 12 to 13 percent. The earnings of Sensex companies have compounded about 12 to 13 percent. And Sensex itself has compounded about 12 to 13 percent in last 30 years, which means that every six years, the Sensex itself has doubled money every six years, right? Now you can imagine that if every six years the Sensex itself can double your money, we are not even talking about good fund manager, bad fund manager, large cap, small cap, defense, mm. private sector. We are not even talking that. We are just talking Sensex. Sensex itself has doubled money every six years. But you don't find very many people who double their money every five to six years. You correct, don't. Correct. Right? Why? Okay. Because they are lacking in discipline. And because they are showing too much unnecessary talent. <laughs> right? See, if the Sensex itself is going to double your money every six years means you don't need talent. Right? Of course, there are very many good fund managers, right? You, know, you can identify some managers. There are, there are well, it is well known that there are people with track records of why 12%. People have compounded 18-20%. There mm-hmm. are very good fund managers, very good mutual funds. But what I'm saying is that you are blessed to be in a country, you are blessed to be in a market where nominal GDP over 30 years has grown 12-13%. And like I said early on in our conversation, that growth has translated into real NAV movement for people. It's not some pie in the sky. It's not some government sector growing. Yeah? It's the broad market. So it just needs discipline. Yeah. What happens is that people will say that, you know, why 12%? Man, I can grow 20%. But then instead of going to some mutual fund, they'll say, I'll do it myself. Yeah. Then they'll not even land up with 12 or 20. They'll land up at 6. Correct. That's why I said that Nobel Prize in economics has been awarded to people for studying human behavior. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, behavior is a major thing. Behavior is the and, key and another thing. thing is that they will get busy in their life, different stages of their life. They get that. If they get busy, they will do very well. <laughs> the point <laughs> they is, want, <laughs> no, the point is that we see. And, if uh, they get busy with their life, they will do very well. The point is that despite being busy with their life, they are opening the account statement <laughs> and seeing every third or fourth day. And they are thinking that, you know, it has gone up, let me remove, it has gone down, let me put, this fund is not good, that fund is not bad. And, you know, so many things people do, they're complicated. I think you look for an advisor, look for a distributor, uh, you know, listen on YouTube, you follow whatever you believe. But I think just stick to it and show some discipline, don't show talent. (laughs) Okay, thank you. And uh, I have uh, seen a lot of work from uh, Vitalk talking about SIP, Um, you know, I think those things I will, uh, I I didn't ask any of that question because I can do the separate video for people in the later stage and make it publicized. And I have taken those things from Naveen and uh, I, I, I have all those things. And uh, I think almost all the questions are answered. Uh, yeah, of when course. When you said best yes. date, uh, yes. how much you have to invest in large cap or mid cap. I think in series of videos, I, I will do it. I didn't because those things have already he has uh, delivered. So now, you know, whatever these questions you have, I have asked and the answer which you got. I think it's a uh, give a lot of... Uh, uh, food for thought for people and at the same time uh, you know this is a lot enough for people to see that uh, how investing should be serious and the thing, thing that what are the major things they have to follow and uh, uh, what is your final advice for our audience uh, today uh, you know uh, when we conclude uh, this uh, series see I would say that you know just start right that is one just start number two is that whoever you believe in 
whether you think your best friend is capable or you have the best advisor or the distributor or your neighborhood you know whoever you believe in but of course you believe in who has knowledge or who has that pragmatic understanding right so get anybody who you will follow start get somebody who will guide you mm-hmm. and then third is just stay the course okay. you know don't keep you know we go to cinema okay. hall to buy tickets every time we stand in a queue other queue is moving faster okay. but you know ultimately what happens that the same thing i experienced with the uh, in mumbai that uh, our uh, central railway station no i used to do that the same thing happens in our industry absolutely also. <laughs> so so there is no end to trying to go faster and all right ultimately ultimately it will catch up you just yeah. stay put okay and be disciplined don't show too much talent okay yeah we will we'll, i'm sure that you know i i have taken a um, lot from you this one i'm sure that uh, whatever i have taken i will improve implement in my practice <laughs> tomorrow somebody will uh, get benefit out of it and i'm sure that all people who watched uh, going to watch also going to get benefit out of it and uh, thanks thank you so much sir uh, for uh, taking out you know uh, one hour time uh, for our audience to share your knowledge oh it's and my pleasure if you know if it helps anybody i'm glad thank you thank yeah, you yeah just to, just to add that this is uh, for me it's a big uh, fanboy moment with you uh, oh no no it's my pleasure <laughs> thank you for inviting yeah, thank me thank you thank you thank you thank you and uh, you know i'm sure that uh, people will enjoy this thank, thank you thank you all the best thank you.